Okay, so for the first logo we're gonna do in this tutorial series is we're gonna do a hardcore style logo. Now I don't mean like punk, um, I mean like straight up hardcore, uh, very much in the kind of vein of say terror, uh, mad ball, then some kind of big late to early 2010s bands like uh, Expire, uh, Backtrack. Now we're thinking big, big bold lettering like made out of stone, loads of damage, cracks, maybe some bricks thrown in. We want it to look like super bold, like in your face. Uh, the kind of thing that you'd like is back print, you know. We're gonna start off with a nice font called uh, Square 721. And I'm gonna leave that in the description down below so people can download that. And once you type out your word, you're gonna wanna like play around with your kerning because once we start drawing this, we want all the, the space between letters to be like set in stone, pardon the pun. And uh, this is the best way to do it. Just get it done now, play with your kerning in your character panel, and then uh, worry about drawing when it comes to come later. So as I said, we're gonna worry about getting our shape and everything right here. So the best thing about these like big, bold, hardcore logos is uh, you want a lot of nice kind of uh, arcing and uh, you know, different sort of warping effects which we can achieve by rasterizing this uh, font, going into warp and playing around, which you know, you can you can mess with your perspective and all whatever. But all I did there was then inverted the black uh, font and put a stroke on it, probably about eight to 13 is usually what I go for, you know, like Fibonacci sequence kind of stuff, so everything looks balanced. But uh, this is just our guide, so we're going to then uh, reduce the opacity on this to about 50% and uh, we're pretty much good to go. We're pretty much good to start drawing this now. Maybe kind of play around with it a bit if you want to like extend your letters and stuff because as I said this font is just a guide. Now for the pen that I'm using here um, or brush I should say it's a uh, uh, True Grit Texture Supplies Stipple Studio and I absolutely love these brushes. I'm going to leave a description down below there. I think it was like a tenner and it's probably the best tenner I've ever spent, apart from, you know, maybe 10 cans of Dutch gold. But this gives you like a real nice uh, bleed, drippy sort of effect, you know, like an old like uh, ink marker, or not ink marker, paint marker, you know, like graffiti style markers. And uh, like, listen, this is, this is a hardcore logo. We want this to be imperfect. We don't want it to be like uh, super like clean and straight and all. So all we're gonna do is just like, really roughly go over these letters i mean like put in some little dense little scratches like uh if some bits are thicker than others like it really doesn't matter like as i said it's like imperfect and that's what we want so once we like go over this we've got our main letter forms kind of like roughly hashed out uh we're gonna start playing around with a bit of the 3d effect now so you'll rasterize your layer uh well, what I'm doing here is actually filling in the insides. Um, rasterize the layer, and then we're gonna duplicate it and fill it black. So then you're gonna drop the black layer below your main letters. And this is gonna be like our guide for 3D, you know, like um, basically a, a glorified drop shadow. So to get that 3D effect now, we're gonna like pinch it in with perspective which is just gonna, you know, it's gonna seem like the light's coming from behind it almost. And once we do that, then we're gonna take our, our, uh, our uh, brush and we're gonna start filling in, filling in by hand. Now like, this is the trickiest part I'd say of this tutorial is gonna be like, you really need to use your own kind of um, opinion here and what you think kind of looks right. You could, you, listen, you can get into using perspective grids and stuff, but as I said, this is a rough and ready logo. This is, we don't want this to be bulletproof. We want this to be like, to, to like retain its character, you know, like something that was like drawn in like an old, like hardcore uh, tape demo from like the late eighties, you know, that kind of imperfect, but perfect kind of, kind of vibe. So as we fill it in, like you'll probably notice I've gone over a few bits, uh, a bit too heavy like again it's gonna be up to you like whether you want to like put a thicker stroke on it or um keep it nice and kind of sharp i think i opt, opt for going uh, fairly heavy on this to be honest because as i said we want it to be nice and bold 
think of something on a backdrop, like, you know, a big terror backdrop or something, or like... Oh, just need a little sip here, there. Oh! So now I'm kind of going back over, uh, kind of removing a bit of the places I went a bit too heavy, if you, you can kind of see there. It's kind of better to, to zoom out when you're doing stuff like this, like, I, I spit push my chair to the other side of the office sometimes just so I get a real like far far away point of uh, view at these things you know so I think I was pretty happy with this here now uh, so I start going through with your uh, your magic wand tool on just like um, very roughly just selecting the white parts of the letter forms and I'm gonna duplicate these and uh, put them on another layer where I'm just kind of like messing around with strokes you know like still a few bits I need to kind of clear up here uh, nothing too heavy though just really you just use your own eye use your own judgment go in like just chop things up to, you know nip tuck here and there whatever you feel works works you know this is for you at the end of the day unless it's for our clients and then it's 100% down to them yeah, like you can go in, you can you can start like nip talking things, and you be there all day. And sometimes I think it's like you're you're much better off getting the letter forms down like at the beginning, and just like not worrying them because like once you have it down solid in the first place, there's gonna be very little backtracking. Pardon the pun again. So once I, I kind of feel happy with like the general shapes here, and um, I'm gonna start with the detail. And again, so we're going to use the True True Grit Supply Company uh, staple brushes with the like nice bleedy kind of dirty one. And I'm just like putting in natural sort of cracks again. As I was saying, we want these letters to look like they're made out of rock, like stone, brick, whatever. So cracks through the walls, that kind of style crack we're going to start putting in through the letters. And like your individual letters, it's quite nice if you actually like continue cracks from one letter into another in a natural kind of flow if you get then at the corners and edges you can kind of put little small breaks to kind of hint at the fact that there's maybe a bit crumbling off you know then once we have our cracks down i think one of my favorite brushes that i use all the time now is the actual staple brushes from uh, the staple supply or staple studio Basically what, what this does is instead of you having to individually go in and put in every little dot, you, you run the brush over the, the general area that you want and it'll automatically like uh, fill it in with little dots. So you have full control, like this is still you drawing. It just speeds it up, you know what I mean? You don't want to be like mashing your drawing tablet with your, your stylus. You want to, to just have a nice smooth deliberate kind of direct lines and the, the brush does that for you as you can see here really roughens it up straight away gives it a nice little three-dimensional edge kind of again that very natural rock style kind of um, look that we're, we're hoping to achieve here just gets brought out straight away with this brush can't recommend it enough again gonna leave, leave a nice little uh, link down if you want to pick it up yourself I'd, I'd highly recommend it so as we go through our letters, we're, we're highlighting bits. Not that we don't want to bring the, the stippling to the edges. We want to leave like a white edge. So we're, we're just detailing the inner parts of the letters if you get me. This will give it that nice rough kind of natural feel. Um, once once we finish, we're happy with the, the white parts of the letter and we can go on to the, the drop shadow for lack of a better term. Again, gonna use the stipple brush for this. And uh, here I am nip talking now. But uh, use the stipple brush for this, but just white. You know, I'll always do these textures and everything on different layers. We can, even, you know, merge things, duplicate them, whatever later on. But like always work in different layers. I'm not, excuse me, I'm not the tidiest designer. I'm very bad when it comes to, to naming my layers. And I think that's something that you should really try to get into uh, earlier sooner rather than later but again not the end of the world if you're not naming your layers it just might take a little while to, to kind of go back and figure them out here i'm just kind of detailing up anyway as i was saying uh same with the, the stipple brush 
and now I'm quite happy. I think I'm, I'm chuffed with how this has kind of come out. So once you're you're happy with your your detail, you can start playing around with your your overall shape now. Like I usually kind of go back in and like warp things. Sometimes give them like a, a liquefied pass. You know, a lot of the time when I'm when I'm finished uh, drawing the logo, I like to go back and kind of play around with the warp, play around with, with a bit of perspective. Sometimes give it a liquefied pass and kind of nudge things here and there, you know. Uh, but in, for this example, like I actually think I was like, I was happiest with how it was, like drawn straight away. So I just got straight into texturing, and I'm feeling pretty pretty sound today. So I have this uh, secret little texture pack that I've made myself over the years and uh, I'm gonna include a little Google Drive link in the description for this video for, if, for you if you want to like grab that texture yourself. I use these things all the time. I made them like four, three or four years ago and like there's barely a project that goes by that I don't use the, the textures I've made so I hope you get good use out of them as well. Now here I'm just throwing in some little details, you know, little uh, as we said, like hinting at rubble and a bit of motion in the logo, a bit of motion in how it, how it kind of looks. And I think it sets it off, you know? Set it off, as, as Freddie from Abbott once said. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, I hope that kind of tutorial cleared up some things for people. I know it's kind of hard to kind of visualize where you would start at something like this when you're just seeing the finished uh, article. But as I said, like there's there's no harm in laying out your uh, logo with a font that you like to look on because let's face it, like it, it, we're using a computer and we're using these programs um, in the same way an artist uses a paintbrush. It's just a tool, and like the whole thing is, especially in a commercial setting, is you you can't be bogged down all day worrying about uh, how long things are going to take you. Like if something saves you time i would say go for it you know like there's no shame in that like just save yourself some time use uh every tool at your disposal to to make what you want to make and uh yeah best of luck i'd love to see how uh, how your logos turn out yourselves now